assessment of uh, uh, pain in the right iliac fossa is a very common clinical uh, condition that uh, uh, you will get uh, in your clinical practice. Very often you get to assess a patient who has got uh, right iliac fossa uh, pain. Um, again, uh, once we are asked to see a patient with certain symptom, we have to have the differential diagnosis uh, ready. Most of the uh, pains that happen in the right iliac fossa are either non-specific abdominal pain or they are appendicitis. But there are other reasons for right iliac fossa pain. And in fact, it could be anything. So you have to keep a, a, an open mind about the differential diagnosis and the other possibilities uh, around it. Now commonly, um, we see in children mesenteric lymphadenitis, which is hard to differentiate from appendicitis. Uh, also, diverticulitis can be uh, uh, a reason for right iliac fossa pain, and also uh, ovarian pathologies in, uh, uh, in females and the childbearing age. This is a historical day, uh, background for uh, acute appendicitis. If you are uh, <coughs> interested, uh, that the first time it was diagnosed by uh, Reginald Fitz in Boston, 1886, and uh, McBurney described the first incision in uh, <coughs> 1989. One of the major uh, landmarks in the treatment of acute appendicitis is the uh, uh, discovery of the antibiotics in the uh, 40s, which led to uh, improved uh, uh, improvement in survival. Uh, surgery obviously have played a major role, but um, in addition to that, uh, antibiotics have uh, made a big difference. Generally, about 8% of people will have appendicitis during their uh, lifetime, and it can happen at any age, but the maximum age for uh, Appendicitis to uh, happen is uh, between the age of uh, 15 uh, or let's say 12 to 25, but it does happen at any age. Characteristics of the pain that you need to uh, be aware of is uh, migrating pain. What do we mean by that? People usually start having pain in the uh, abdomen, and most of the time the pain is central, peri umbilical and colicky, and they will migrate to the right iliac force uh, pain. That happens in a majority of the patients, uh, but it's not the great majority. It's about 60% of the times. They will always have lack of appetite and uh, nausea. They feel unwell, and they look unwell. And when you examine them, they are tender in the right iliac fossa, but they have good guarding. And for medical students, guarding is something that you need to feel for a few times to be able to appreciate. It's how the muscles um, go rigid when the underlying peritoneum is rotated by an infective uh, uh, process. Uh, and that it feels just basically rigid uh with resistance when you try to uh push and if you push harder the tenderness and the pain will go up an important fe feature is almost always appendicitis is associated with rising inflammatory markers and these markers are the crp and the uh, neutrophils um, if uh, crp and neutrophils are within normal i doubt if the patient will have appendicitis. Usually it's related to uh, another uh, reason. So you need to start thinking about other causes, such as, particularly in females, ruptured ovarian follicle, a retrograde menstruation, um, uh, uh, problems with endometriosis, uh, torsion of uh, the um, uh, tube and the uh, ovary. Uh, salpingoarthritis, uh, pelvic inflammatory uh, disorders. So you need to uh, keep these as well as uh, uh, in the differential diagnosis in young females.
important points in the history that you want to um, focus on when you take that as we see the pain and its character characteristics the nausea and the vomiting the appetite does the patient feel well or unwell do they have temperature was there any urinary symptoms in the form of a burning maturation or uh, pain in the lumbar uh, area at the costophrenic uh, angle uh, females always ask about the last menstrual period what sort of contraceptive they are using if they are and their sexual activity in addition to ensuring they are not pregnant uh, by doing a pregnancy test ask about recent febrile illnesses viral illnesses can affect the um, gastrointestinal, uh, can gastrointestinal tract after a recent attack of uh, uh, viral illness that affected the uh, lungs uh, and if that happens uh, the diagnosis of acute appendicitis becomes less evident. And also you have to ask them about bowel activity, whether they have got diarrhea or, uh, or uh, vomiting or uh, both of them. And if the patient have diarrhea, then you have to uh, think uh, not appendicitis, but pos uh, possibly gastroenteritis of some form or other f form of illnesses that lead to diarrhea. When you examine the patient, generally nothing uh, uh, different, the same points in the uh, examination. Uh, you, you need to know their temperature and you need to see how the patient looks from the end of the bed. The general look unwell and, you, and when you see unwell patient a few times, you will be able to recognize and appreciate if they are unwell or unwell. When you examine the abdomen, look at the site of the tenderness, which is uh, the McBurney point, and that McBurney point will be uh, halfway between the umbilicus and the anterior superior iliac spine. In fact, it's one third of the way uh, in that direction, but um, uh, here it's just to uh, mention the points. Guarding is very essential. If they don't have guarding, they are likely to have appendicitis. You always need, need to examine the groin to rule out uh, groin hernia that has not been uh, suspected by the patient or there could be an inflammatory lymph node in the, uh, the groin and the pain could be referred to the uh, right eye leg uh, and uh, can mislead you. Young Young uh, males always examine the testes. Abdominal cutis is known to uh, present with abdominal pain and could be mistaken for appendicitis. Renal angle tenderness this is the last one. And then you move on, G uh, get some blood uh, for the patients, intravenous uh, uh, line, uh, the line needs some fluid, painkillers, and then you do the routine bloods like we mentioned in any abdominal pain. There will be full blood count, UNEs. Uh, LFTs, lipase, uh, beta HCG, and CRP. And as I uh, mentioned, we need to have raised inflammatory markers to be able to diagnose appendicitis uh, confidently. <coughs> Initial treatment um, we give them intravenous fluid, uh, keep them null by mouth because they will need to go to theater once we made the uh, diagnosis then um, we uh, serve them usually on antibiotics and manage their pain if we are happy that clinically this uh, clinical scenario the clinical examination and the blood results are uh, all suggestive of appendicitis then we usually go to the operating theater and uh, do a laparoscopic appendectomy. Uh, the risk of having uh, negative uh, uh, appendix in this situation uh, should be quoted around uh, uh, 20%. Uh, the, that's getting less and less because we're using images uh, and uh, imaging rather uh, more than uh, what we used to in the past. If we are in doubt and not uh, sure, particularly in females, we will always do an ultrasound scan. And the role of the ultrasound scan really is to tell us the, uh, the condition of the ovary. Uh, it's not reliable for the diagnosis of, uh, of uh, appendicitis um, <clears throat> at all. 
the next one is the CT scan. We tend to do a CT scan to people who to, uh, we are not uh, sure, particularly if they are uh, older than the age of uh, 35, where the effect of the radiation is less. CT scan is very sensitive and highly, uh, highly sensitive and very specific to diagnose acute appendicitis confidently. We use MRI sometimes, and the MRI is the benefit of the MRI is mainly in children when we are in doubt and in pregnant females. As you said, the other causes of the right eye look for uh, there are a variety of reasons, and this could be mesenteric lymphadenitis is very important. Terminal ileitis as a result of either Crohn's disease or, or infection with the uh, Salmonella, Shigella, or Campylobacter can actually give you a picture clinically very similar to acute appendicitis. Um, and in this situation, the inflammatory markers could be uh, high. And you find most of these patients will end up having a diagnostic laparoscopy. Ovarian pathology, as we said, we mentioned those uh, ruptured ovarian follicle is a common reason for uh, abdominal pain in young ladies and twisted ovarian cyst. Uh, and we mentioned the rest of them. And in particular, we need to ensure that uh, the problem is not a ureteric stone. Treatment. The standard treatment, usually the patient will be fasting, and we take them to theater and do the appendix laparoscopically. Majority of patients who uh, have appendicitis these days will have their operation done laparoscopically with a small risk of failure, which means we have to open to get the appendix out in cases where the uh, inflammatory process has been going on for a few uh, more, more than a few days. If the patient has got perforated uh, appendix and they are peritonitic in this situation, that will fall under the perforated viscous, which means they will need a full laparotomy. Occasionally, we treat them with antibiotics and uh, 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 drainage. Uh, if there is a mass and uh, the patient has been symptomatic for a few days, we might start them with antibiotics and see how they uh, progress. They either uh, settle down or they uh, get an abscess formation that can be drained uh, through the skin or uh, they uh, deteriorate and need an emergency operation. Very often, treatment with antibiotics and uh, drainage of the abscess is successful in these situations. People who uh, treated uh, non-operatively just with antibiotics will need an interval appendectomy, and that is done at 12 weeks from the onset. And usually possible again to do it laparoscopically. When you read the pathology report, you'll find that the pathologist will say subcurative appendicitis. I mean that it's just uh, 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 acute appendicitis with pockets of pus on the appendix itself without perforation. Gangrenous, when there is uh, 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 gangrene in the uh, wall and usually associated with localized uh, rupture, and this patient will need uh, at least 48 hours uh, prolonged antibiotic treatment. Otherwise, if it's suppressive appendicitis, we stop the, append the antibiotics after the operation. If the if, uh, appendix was perforated and they needed a laparotomy, then the antibiotic treatment is five to seven days. It's important to, uh, to know that sometimes when you take an appendix, you find tumor in it. And this could be either neuroendocrine tumor, carcinoid, or malignant. And the malignant are listed in there, particularly mucin assisted adenoma and uh, uh, goblet cell carcinoma and adenocarcinoma. Uh, these patients, the management of these patients, will need further follow-up and they will need a uh, right hemi colectomy with uh, possibly followed by uh, antibiotics. However, if we find a carcinoid tumor, the criteria is different and that will be discussed elsewhere. There is a role for non-operative treatment in the form of antibiotics, usually cephalosporins and metronidazole, and um, uh, we uh, do that when there is a phlegmon and the uh, radiologist is unable to uh, drain that for us. We know that mild appendicitis can happen and can improve without uh, uh, treatment and can be difficult to diagnose.